Hi, I'm Pat Taglarini from Sew Journey, and um, I've had a number of the ladies I sew with ask how to make these walker totes. We've been making them since 2017, and I thought I'd do a video to explain it better. So what we need to do is cut two pieces of fabric. They need to be 16 by 43. One of the pieces needs to be a little heavier, like tapestry material, and the other can be a quilting cotton. If you use two pieces of quilting cotton, one of the two pieces will have to be backed with um, medium iron-on pelon. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So I need to cut two pieces, 16 by 43. Usually you can get two pieces out of this. All right, we're going to take the two fabrics and put them right sides together. We're going to sew all the way around, uh, leaving about a three inch opening at one end in order to be able to turn it. So it sort of makes what we call a pillowcase turn. And you can pin yours. I rarely pin mine because it's such a straight line, but pinning is always a good option, especially if you're new at it. One tip that will help you out um, for one thing, I'm using two different colors of thread. The bottom is khaki and the top is blue, so that will show up. Is to pull your fabric after you have it, and I'm not pulling it, but I'm keeping it taut, and pull it up this way. This will allow you to sew a straight line. Make sure that you back tag both beginning and ending of this. And then just sew all the way around. All right, notice this is where I started right here, and this is my corner. You don't want to start in the corner to make turning easier. So I'm going to sew down to about here and then stop, and then we'll turn it inside out, right side out. All right, it's important to cut your corners to trim them so that when you turn it, it's going to lay flat. So this is a corner, and I'm going to diagonally cut it across as such. And then I like to clip one clip on each side not through the thread, and one clip in the middle. And do that on all four corners. All right, so what we're going to do now is simply turn it. Find your opening, put your hand in. I find it easier to come up to the corner, put my finger right where the turn is, and pull it back on all four corners. And then we'll... Um, go ahead with a tool to get it out so it looks really good. All right, and just carefully turn it and pull it all the way out. Be careful not to rip your seam that you just put in. At this point it's good to have some kind of a tool. For the longest time I used a uh, knitting needle but here I have a special tool to help push those corners out. So come into your corners and poke them out. Make sure you get all four corners. This is one my husband made for me much better than my knitting needle. <laughs> it's important at this time to give it a good pressing. And if you notice, the seam won't line up perfectly, but if you give it a roll up, that's going to help. And the other way, if, it, if it's still being a little bit stubborn, is to press the seam open and then it'll lay perfectly flat for you the next time you iron it where you want it. Iron all the way around. By the way, there's no steam in this iron. Steam has a tendency to stretch the fabric and we don't want to do that. All right, once we have it nicely pressed, we're going to sew a seam on the short ends only. So just line it up. I usually just use um, a quarter inch, sometimes a little more. Make sure you back tack at each end and sew straight across. You don't need to do the long ends at this time. This is where the thread color comes very important. You can't see the seam I put in, nor here basically it matches. So this is why two different colors of thread. Let me go ahead and do this other end, and then we'll go on. Always good to trim up your threads. 
All right, so the next thing we need to do is add our Velcro. Um, you need two pieces of Velcro that are um, three inches long. The next thing we need to do um, is go ahead and mark the front and back of your quilt at center. For me, that's about 21 inches. Give or take a little, it really won't make any difference, but please mark both sides. On the wrong side, we're going to sew the Velcro in, as I have done here for you. And let me show you how I did this, because this is going to fold over, and this is where it's going to Velcro over the walker. All right, so we need five inches from uh, the center line. And I like to use two rulers for this. It just makes it easier. So here's marked at five inches down and an inch and a half in from the side. So you want to be five inches down and a half, an inch and a half this way. And just make a little mark here. And then come over and do the same on this side. You're going to do this to all four edges. Now here's the thing. You probably want to use old pins here because I usually bend my pins. All right, so come in and put your Velcro down, stick a pin in it as best you can. It's one of the harder things to do because you've got the fabric and the pin will bend. Now I just want to eyeball this or check it really to make sure my, my Velcro tapes are straight or close to straight. Move these out of the way. There we go. So we're about perfect there, but not here. Let me move this one over a bit. Now one other thing you need to know is I have changed my thread. Uh, I'm going to change my thread, I should say, in just a minute. Right now I still have two different colors. All right, so let's go ahead and sew this in. Make sure you back tack all the way, back tack at beginning and end. All right, as you can tell, I've kind of rolled the fabric here to make it fit in. However, that's the easiest for you to do. I usually start on the short end and back tack across. Flip it around and straighten it back up, sew it down. If it's off a little bit, not perfectly, it won't matter because it's going to Velcro. We need to do that to all four pieces. Make sure that on the same side you have either the loops or you have the Velcro part. So keep them on the same side. These are my two looped sides and these are my Velcro sides. All right, now that we have the Velcro sewn in, we're going to fold it close to center and this will make the Velcro stick together just to check to make sure this is how it hangs over the walker cover this way with the Velcros holding it down. So let's open it back up. We've checked it. We know it's going to work. Now we're going to fold up the edge and we're going to fold it up about eight and a half inches. So let me come over here. Anywhere between eight, eight and a half, depending on how deep you want those pockets to be. Let me get my clips. I highly recommend here that you use these little clips as opposed to pinning because you will definitely bend your needles. So when you have this at eight, eight and a half inches, make sure your edges are even and put in a few of these clips on both sides. If you use eight and a half, you use eight and a half on both sides. If you use eight, make sure of course it's eight. All right, as you know, we did not sew the opening closed when we um, when we turned it, we've left it open. This is where we're going to sew it closed right now. This is also where we're going to change the thread. I'm going to put the blue thread in both top and bottom. Starting here, I'm going to back tack and sew straight on down. Back tack, same on this side. I'm going to back tack, sew straight down and back tack. I'm going to make sure this is at a quarter of an inch or a little smaller to make sure that I get the opening that we left closed. I'm also going to loosen my thread stitch. It's been at 2.5, I'm going to 3. That's going to allow for the extra thickness that we have going on here. And then just back tack slowly because you have thick fabric here. Now I want 
to show you a little trick right here that's going to help this pocket not pull out for the people that are going to get it. Back tack uh, about a fourth of an inch. Turn your fabric and put a little triangle in here. Stop at the edge, flip it and back tack right here again. This reinforces that edge so it will not come out. And then realign your fabric and continue your quarter of an inch all the way down. All right, let me show you that triangle again. I'm going to, to sew to this edge and back tack. And then I'm going to back up, curve my fabric out about 45 degrees, sew over, stop, lift it, and turn it again and back tack on this corner. That reinforcement triangle helps it stay together. And then come back to where I would have been, flip it back around, and continue sewing my quarter inch seam all the way down. The triangle came this way, back tacked, and I came to here, turned the fabric and came this way, back tacked here, came back this way, back tacked, stopped here, and then came on down. I know that's an extra step, but it reinforces the pocket so it won't come out when it has weight in it. All right, we're almost finished. All right, now we're actually just going to make the pockets. Um, you can do it two ways to mark your pocket. This is the Frisian pin. It irons out. Do check your fabric first to make sure that it's going to not leave a mark. Uh, sometimes when I've got darker fabric, what I like to use is chalk. Now this is a special kind of chalk. I bought this, emptied it out, and then put an iron on chalk in here so it will iron out. So wherever you want to put your pocket, I'm going to um, put one pocket here, and so I'm going to draw a straight line. On the other side, I'm going to do the same thing, um, and I may put um, three pockets. The first pocket, um, it's probably going to be about five inches because you don't want to make them too small. They can't get their hand down inside to get it out. And over here I may back up and do um, five inches again. So one side has three and one has uh, one. And you can do that any way you want. You can leave it whole. I find that it becomes heavy that way and this way they can put a phone or a book or whatever inside. So we're basically going to go to the machine and here we are going to back tack and sew straight up and back tack and come on this side, back tack, sew down and back tack, back tack and sew down and back tack and then these will be finished. Now I am going to leave the stitch at 3.0 because we're sewing through a lot of fabric. It makes it a little bit easier than doing that 2.5 at this time. basically sew down the line. At this point you want to trim up all your loose little threads, get them out of your way. Neat and tidy is always a good thing. And other than ironing this and getting out our marks, uh, this is finished. It velcros this way and then your bag is totally, totally finished for someone to enjoy. And the nursing homes really appreciate receiving these. Thank you.